If you try to bend the scale with the width in the vertical position, you will find it difficult to bend and any bending that occurs will be minimal. If you turn the scale with the width in the horizontal plane and try to bend it, you will be able to deflect it easily until it breaks. In this video, I am going to discuss why the depth of a beam is kept more than its width. When a load is applied on a beam, it tends to deflect the beam and generates some bending moment within the beam. The primary role of a beam is to withstand the moment generated by the load applied to it. As the beam opposes deflection, it generates a substantial moment which it must endure. Beams are designed to resist the bending stresses with greater flexural rigidity. Flexural rigidity is nothing but the resistance offered by a beam while undergoing bending. Hence, the most cost-effective beam design is the one that provides the greatest flexural rigidity with the smallest cross-sectional area. The rigidity of a beam is represented by EI, where E is the flexural modulus or modulus of elasticity in bending and I is the moment of inertia of the given cross-section. In other words, the ability of a beam is determined by its moment of inertia, which indicates the resistance created within the beam. The larger the moment of inertia, the greater will be the resistance offered by the beam to the moment. For a specific material, the modulus of elasticity remains constant and the moment of inertia is determined by the beam's cross-sectional dimensions. For a rectangular cross-section, the moment of inertia is given by I equal to BD cube upon 12, where B is the width of the beam and D is the depth of the beam. As seen in this equation, increasing the depth of the beam is more effective and economical than increasing its width. For illustration, let's consider two beams having same cross-sectional area with different orientations. Beam 1 has a width of 300 mm and its depth is 500 mm while beam 2 has a width of 500 mm and its depth is 300 mm. Now, let's calculate the moment of inertia for both the beams. For beam 1, I will be equal to BD cube upon 12, where B is 300 mm and D is 500 mm. On substituting these values, I will be equal to 3.125 into 10 to the power 9. For beam 2, the width is 500 mm and depth is 300 mm. On substituting these values, the moment of inertia for beam 2 will be 1.125 into 10 to the power 9. Based on this calculation, it can be concluded that beam 1 has a larger moment of inertia than beam 2 despite both having the same cross-sectional area. So it's more economical to design a beam with a greater depth in comparison to its width. To make it more practical, let's consider a measuring scale if you try to bend the scale with the width in the vertical position, you will find it difficult to bend and any bending that occurs will be minimal. However, if you turn the scale with the width in the horizontal plane and try to bend it, you will be able to deflect it easily until it breaks. In both the cases, the scale has the same cross-sectional area. However, by changing the orientation of the scale, flexural rigidity is created. This means that the scale resists greater moments when the measurement along the vertical axis is greater than the horizontal axis. This concept applies to designing beams as loads on beams act in a vertical direction. Therefore, an efficient beam is designed with a greater depth than its width.